Casualties. Count. Two. Recovered from Iron Warriors. Raid on Severus. Three. Classification. Havocs. Status. Limbs. Compromised. Internal organs. Intact. Mental faculties. Minimal. Proceed with termination and recycling. I think not. <laughs> the Dark Gods do not like to lose their servants so easily. <laughs> Soon, these fools will truly be iron within, iron without. <laughs> Welcome back to the Forge of Sagas, and today we are going to be showing you how to build and magnetize a set of Catafron Havocs. The build will be for the body based on the Necron Wraith. If you only want to know about how to magnetize a standard Catafron, there's a timestamp in the description below. Now let's get started. The first thing you'll need is a fully assembled Wraith torso. Cut it out, shave off the mold lines and anything left over. And then take your clippers, and we're going to cut off these spines here. This is going to help us fit the torso on later, as well as just make it a little more streamlined. For my torso, I grabbed one of the Chaos Space Marines that came from the Shadow Spear box set. To remove the legs, I grabbed my clippers, and I cut them off at the waist first. Remove the legs before you cut off the waist, because that's just going to give you a nice clean cut. Next, I'm going to grab the torso, and I'm going to remove this little tabard. It's going to get in the way as we try and get it closer to the Necron body, so we're going to cut this off cleanly with our knife. These kinds of tabards make great bits to save for other builds, so I wanted to hang on to it. Now it's time just to gauge our parts, do a little lining things up and see how they work. I wanted to kind of sit him in this ball socket joint because it would make a nice attachment, but I quickly realized that if I wanted to also get weapons in there, it was not going to fit. In order to elevate the torso, I grabbed the chest plate from an Ophidian Destroyer that I had left over from my Taraxi build, as that would give the torso the added height and provide a nice bit of continuity between the Wraith body and the Chaos Space Marine torso. We just have to trim it flat so it fits, and boom, there we go. Now we're going to start putting in the legs. I did every other one just to give it a more spider-like appearance, and because that would make it sit better on the base. Remember when you're cutting off these legs that if you want to pose them better, you can just snip off the nibs so that they don't have to line up the way they're supposed to in the kit. Another thing to remember when you're lining these up is the base. You have to make sure that your parts fit, and here we can see that the big claw at the end just was not going to fit on this 60 millimeter base. So I came in and popped off that top, and I came in with my clippers and removed this control nub that helps it stay in place and then I filed that down flat. Now that all of our legs are at the proper angle, it's time to discuss the hole in the top. There's these gaps in the side where the Ophidian Destroyer torso is supposed to meet this chest plate that we don't have. To fill that gap, I cut some lengths of copper wire to fit, as these will give the appearance that this Chaos Space Marine has been hardwired into this other piece of technology. Once you've got them all cut, just feel free to super glue them in at whatever crazy angles you like. And here's our finished product. Now all that's left to do is grab our Chaos Space Marine and glue him down too. Here I'm using the Auto Cannon Heavy Weapons Backpack that comes in the Shadow Spear box to simulate a kind of energy pack, because we know that the Cataphrons use more energy weapons than they do physical projectiles. But, you know, this is chaos, so we're going to have to use whatever technology we've got on hand. And here we go, looking pretty good. Now the next thing was to put on the main gun for the Cataphron. I tested a lot of configurations before deciding that really the only place the gun was going to fit was up in the front, the one limitation of using monopose models in your conversions. So to give the weapons a good place to sit, I came with my clippers and I removed this bump at the front. Once you get it nice and flat, you can come in with a 1 8 inch drill bit and install a magnet. This is going to help you swap out weapons as you go. But we still need to get back to this arm, something has to go there. The spare arm I used came from a Goliath Gang model. This had a grenade launcher attached to it that I used for my aggressor conversion. So we're just going to file that flat and keep trimming it until it fits nicely in the shoulder socket there. 
Now, for the hand, I decided to use this claw. Give it again the more mutilated, limbs-compromised appearance to this former Havoc. So, I'm just going to shave down the wrist of the Goliath to make a nice flat contact point for me to glue it down. For the other arm, I came in and I drilled in another 1 8 inch magnet into the torso, and I also put one into this Cognus Stubber arm. You can do this for all the different arms, and it just allows you to swap them out to make sure these guns match up with whatever loadout you need, be it the Destroyer with either the Grav or the Plasma, or the Breacher with the Arc, Arc Claw, Hydraulic Claw, whatever else you need to be. And here we go. Fully magnetized, fully assembled, and ready for combat. Now let's talk about magnetizing a more standard model. The first magnet I put in is the shoulder, which is a 1 8 inch diameter magnet. Now I also put one here by cutting off the wrist of the Chaos Space Marine, but as we saw at the last one, you can also put it in the shoulder if you want to. If you decide to cut things at the wrist, I would use a 1 16th inch magnet for all of the little pieces, the different claws and smaller guns that go here. Otherwise, since you'll be using the full arm and shoulder joint, I would recommend using a 1 8 inch magnet. Now for the guns. I used a 1 16th inch magnet and I drilled all the way through. You can push fit these, no pressure fit stay right there, but if you're a little uncomfortable you can add just a little bit of super glue, smear it on with a paintbrush or pencil, and you'll be fine. I also added a piece of metal to the inside of the gun carriage for the plasma and grav gun because there's no real good place to mount a magnet. This is the thin sheet of craft metal that you can get at any crafting store, and I cut it with a pair of tin snips. So here we go. We've got it magnetized. This is a Catafron Destroyer with the Cognus Stubber and Heavy Grav. But with a nice and quick adjustment, we're going to grab the other side of the weapon mount. Now the Arc Rifle and the Torsion Cannon can be pressure fit in here, so that's really nice. This magnetization scheme will work whether you're doing the Imperial Catafron or this kind of chaos -y conversion. And that'll let you adjust your lists so that you can always have your models as what you see is what you get, based on different changes to the rules that may come from points or new codexes. And now here they are in all their Iron Warriors glory. If you enjoyed this conversion tutorial, give us a like and subscribe to the channel to keep up to date on all our future projects, be they conversions or terrain builds. Also. Follow us on social media to see some conversions that I did before starting the channel, as well as to keep up to date on anything new that might be coming out. If there's anything you'd like to see me create here on the channel, feel free to leave a comment below. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you all again the next time we ignite the Forge of Sagas. <laughs>